So a few days ago, I made a phone call trying to get in touch with some physicists here in my city to try and get in touch with them. So I tried to call this place called the Telus World of Science. Um, this recording here, it is one of two recordings. This one here that I'm sharing with you guys first, it's me speaking to a female physicist. The reason why there is no proper introduction that I recorded was because she had returned my phone call and I was still in bed. So I was a bit hazy, if you will, in fact, while we were talking. However, I was able to clear up along the way. So I may stutter, but I also, in this recording, I was speaking from the perspective of one who believes in the ball earth, who believes in gravity. So I'm asking questions about free expansion and gravity. Also, I'll let you guys know, before I started this recording of our conversation, I was telling her that I was doing a project and people had asked me some questions which I could not be able to answer. That's why I made the initiative to make the phone call to them, to reach out to them, to be able to get more, more uh, info, to get these answers from them. What I had done was several days ago, I had called and they transferred me to the physicist department. So I left them a message saying they should call me back because it's urgent and this and that. And a few days later, she contacted me. So I was in bed and here I am. I started recording again. I, I stuttered a bit, but still, nonetheless, I did not want the lady to feel like I'm attacking her or I'm challenging her. So I made myself as one who is on the same side as her. The second recording is me speaking to the astrophysicist, an astrophysicist who actually is the real deal that runs the show, but that will be uploaded at a different time. For now, hope you enjoy this clip. And cooling down, cooling down. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what's happening, right? So you have, you, have, you have the heat coming in and also coming out. Yeah. Also, then the other question is uh, that I was asked about about energy or about thermodynamics is if space is considered a vacuum, um, how do we have rocket propulsion work in a vacuum? If if you have extremely low pressure outside of this pressurized vessel, and it's like it says because then if it's if it is a vacuum and you have that extremely low pressure outside of this pressurized vessel, what kind of a work? really is being done by the rocket if you are simply con if you have free expansion that's attempting to work in a, in an airless uh, vacuum of space how does rocket propulsion work how do they fuel so oxidizers rockets when they leave earth are still in the atmosphere and then normally what they do is again when you're talking about space gravity is really a really really critical component on anything is you will then go and you will be orbiting um, and when you're orbiting, then you're basically constantly in free fall. Okay. Right? And yeah. so you, your rocket is, is not, or your, your satellites, or whatever it may be, are not constantly propulsing themselves there. Oh, they're, 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 they're in orbit. They're being assisted by the gravity, gravitational yes. pull. Exactly. I mean, and, and yes, if you, yeah. Okay. And then, but the, the, the question is, how were we able to get like the the rover on mars and how were we was it through gliding constant like at, at the same speed until we get we get to mars or and also how did that uh, how did that work when we went to the moon i i again i'm not quite sure i understand your question it's about the free expansion because you, you because you just simply said that the rockets would not be i mean the satellites or rockets which are orbiting around earth they use it's it's, it's more the assistance of gravity correct that they're, yeah, I mean, yes. they're basically in free fall yep and that and that and i agree with what you said there my my, my next question is if we if they if there's if they're not constantly um using thrusters to keep mo moving uh, but because they're constantly free falling yeah. how they do sometimes so in order to maintain orbit sometimes they do need to give it a boost so mm -hmm. they they will every so often uh do that yeah but generally speaking they don't need to okay but then when we went to the when we went to the moon the first few times how how was free expansion able to work in that vacuum because okay let's say we were able to glide um with just get to go get to the moon land properly now how were we able to take off 
from the moon, the surface of the moon, um, with uh, with free expansion and and rocket propulsion that that basically was taking place. But yet, there's no atmosphere on the surface of the moon, right? It's just vacuum. So how did the rocket? How was the rocket able to to leave the surface of the moon the first pl- the first time, the first few times that we landed on the moon? Um, I mean, I I'm not sure exactly how they did it, but they obviously had a system in place that allowed them uh, to do that through whatever mechanical means. Um, I am I'm not familiar about what exactly happened during uh, our lunar explorations, uh, so I would have to look it up and, and get back to you. Okay, because yeah, this is something that I was struggling with because I was I was trying to Google these things and. You know, people ask me these things and, you know, I couldn't be able to answer them that question, right? And so mm-hmm. that's why I decided to call to call you guys to speak with one of the physicists, like as yourself, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so... So, yes, I, I'm not so familiar with all of the details of space exploration. Okay. I, I do have a colleague who is, though, so I can, I can consult him and I'll get back to you. So you're not, you're not sure as far as the, um, how free expansion would work in, an, in a vacuum then? how any of the, the lunar, uh, the details of the lunar landing and, and then coming back here, I don't know exactly what mechanisms they used. Okay. Um, so. But it, it can't be anything that we know of because it's, you understand what I'm saying, right? Because... Um, oh, no, I think be- it is, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, be- it, because... It, this is, it was not, I mean, it, it was revolutionary, but it, this is not new technology or... Uh, I'm sure it's something quite simple, but I don't. I don't want to give you one answer since I'm not sure yeah. exactly what that is. I'm only just going based on what I see, like um, let's say from like NASA's websites, because the same rockets that launch from Earth are pretty much the ones that end up going to the to the moon, right? And when they launch rockets, they try to launch them early, like in the in the mo- in the morning, where the when the air is more cooler, right? Where or might, when it's more dense on the, on the surface. That way, then they're able to get to do a lot more work. And also, the th- like, um, what I also re- what I also noted was that rockets, when rockets are launching, right, um, we see that the fire is more in it's more intense, more more bigger at the at the at the at the base when it when it's launching from the beginning. But as the rocket accelerates and goes further up into the upper atmosphere, it becomes more thicker smokes. Um, of a of a thicker smoke that comes from it. Now, would it make sense if I say that the reason why it's getting more th- the smoke becomes more thicker and thicker as the rocket gets higher and higher? It's because the rocket now has to do extra work because there's there's less there's, the air is more thinner and is more let's say it, it's more it's it's more thinner that the rocket has to do extra amount of work to try and get itself higher up. Is that correct? Um, that, I mean, I, I would say that might be part of the explanation. Um, I also would have to, to look into that to let you know, mm-hmm. um, what exactly is the explanation for that. Okay. All right. Um, I was asked this question and I could not answer it properly. Um, it's also about gravity. Gravity is so powerful that it's able to hold the trillions, like trillions of tons of water on the surface of the earth, Right. Um, yet, how is it that it's so, this force is so powerful that it can be able to hold the amount of water on the surface of the earth, yet, um, it has no effect on, let's say, a butterfly or, you know, how, oh, how is it? but it, it does have an effect on their butterfly, right? But gravity is not the only force at work. So your, your butterfly is, is flying with, on, on the air, then you have the, I mean, the same as on, as an airplane, right? So obviously gravity has an effect on the airplane but there's other forces at work. But, so then all, all they have to do because is if just... There, if there weren't any gravity, mm-hmm. your butterfly would not be moving the same as it is now, right? Yeah. But there is an Does that make that sense? I do kind of understand it. So in other words, as long as the creature overcomes the acceleration of 9.81 meters per second square, it will become airborne. That's yeah, it. I guess that's one way of, of putting it. Yeah. Okay, the, the reason why I was asking that is because I'm picturing gravity as a force, right? It is, yeah. Okay, so it is a, you agree it is a force that's holding things together. So would it be correct if I say gravity is so powerful that it holds heavy things on the surface of the earth, including the massive trillion tons of water on the surface of the earth, 
It's so powerful to hold them all together, yet it's so weak that it can allow um, a, a, a butterfly or a bumblebee, whatever, to be able to take out, to take flight. Would that would that make sense if I if I said that? Uh, I think that's inaccurate. In, 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 inaccurate. Yeah, because I mean, again, even so, the fact that you are not standing on Earth mm-hmm. and you're flying, if you're a butterfly or whatnot, doesn't mean that gravity has stopped acting on you, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's not the definition for gravity not to be in place anymore. It still is. Every, everything is still a, subject to the force of gravity, yeah. regardless of whether you're two feet or on the Earth or not. But mm-hmm. there are other forces at work that might make it that you, now you're a butterfly and you're flying. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, kind of. Because it's, it's, I'm only, I'm only, uh, the reason I only ask that is because I'm seeing it as as a pulling force, almost like, a, I'm, I'm imagining it almost like a magnetic force that we, that we cannot detect. Right? I mean, it is. So if, if we're on Earth, then the gravitational force of Earth is you, you can indeed pull it, consider it as a just this downward pulling force towards Earth. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm really sorry, Manuel, but I, I'm going to have to, to go. Um, I have a meeting in, in five minutes. Um, All right. But yes, it was, it was very nice talking to you. And if you have further questions, um, maybe the most efficient way would be to email me so I can get back to you. Okay. Uh, okay. I, okay, thank you. Thank you, my well, Have a nice day. You too. Okay, bye. <laughs> so, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> these people choke on their own words. I wonder if I wonder if she even believes what she believes, if she really thinks about it. You know, gravity is a myth. It's a it's a hoax. The myth of gravity, you know, but it's pulled many people down. Many people fell for it. So sad. The free expansion obviously does not work in space. That's why she was choking on her words. Think about it, guys. Whoever believes in space travel, interstellar travel, that stuff does not exist. Because space space travel does not exist. I'll try and have the next video for you guys, uh, the next or the other recording. I'll try and upload it uh, when I get the chance here. It is much longer. It's about, it's definitely 25 minutes minimum, 25 minutes going to 30 minutes. I'll try and just shorten it, just, you know, um, cut out whatever is irrelevant and just upload it for you guys there. Um, That's what I'll do with the second recording because that's me talking to the astrophysicist, like a space scientist, and I recorded the conversation. And it's pretty interesting. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is The Controversy 7. I hope you got something out of this video. Feel free to subscribe if you're new to this channel. There's a lot of information coming across your way. Other than that, you take care of yourselves, be safe, and I'll see you guys next time.